Hello everyone and welcome back to another Figurehead Reviews video and today we are finally taking a look at the first G.I. Joe classified series 6 inch figures from Hasbro starting with the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Snake Eyes and they really went all out for this deluxe packaging. It starts off with just a standard cardboard sleeve that yeah there's not a whole lot going on with that. That reveals the inside much thicker cardboard and we get this awesome embossed image on the front and it is raised and wow that just looks awesome i love that and then when you actually open this package you're going to get in and reveal first a print of that embossing waiting for you and that looks fantastic as well very well done and then on the inside we finally reveal the figure with all of his deluxe accessories and man that just looks amazing but let's go ahead and get this box out we'll take a quick look at some of the read up and things like that then we'll get a better look here at snake eyes and here is the smaller packaging removed from the deluxe box and very, very cool looking packaging. I imagine this is what all the classified series boxes will look like. And again, if I didn't mention it or if I mentioned it too quickly, this Snake Eyes Deluxe figure is a Hasbro Pulse store exclusive. So you're only going to find this online. And last time I checked, it was sold out. But man, this box looks awesome. You have Snake Eyes in the front window displayed with a lot of accessories. Not even the ones that are in the deluxe packaging yet. This is just what's in the standard box. We get some really cool artwork of snake eyes in the bottom right corner and of course at the bottom we have the gi joe classified series and then snake eyes and then if we go around to the right hand side this image of snake eyes does actually wrap around and then we also get another picture of snake eyes there at the top on the other side we have the same writing that we had on the embossing so i obviously i'm sure that means something might just mean snake eyes i don't know i'll have to look it up and then we see the number there in the bottom of that side with the double zero i imagine they're going to do similar to black series with a numbering system and then the back side we get this awesome image of all the different gi joe figures that i imagine we're going to be seeing here relatively soon we got duke scarlet roadblock looks like gung-ho Destro, which was recently announced, Baroness, then even Cobra Commander, and a bunch of other fill-in characters. And at the top, we see that numbering system again. So very, very cool looking. But enough about that. Let's get this open and take a look now at the deluxe version of Snake Eyes. And here is Snake Eyes out of the packaging. And holy cow, let me just tell you, this figure has really far exceeded any expectations I had for this line. The articulation is unlike anything that we've seen before. Well, I shouldn't say unlike anything we haven't seen before, but they've introduced some crazy elements into a what is going to be a standard line. Yes, this is a deluxe figure, but the figures themselves are only about $20 to $25. So the articulation that we're seeing with this figure is something that we haven't seen with your Marvel Legends yet. There is so much range on here, and we'll go into some detail on that, but the paint and the sculpt work is on point as well. Now, when standing straight up, this figure is coming in at about 6 and a quarter inches tall, which makes him about 15.9 centimeters. And being a deluxe version of this figure, we get a ton of weapons, including a dual-bladed spear, two hatchets or throwing axes, two commas, what appears to be a nagamaki, which is a very long-bladed and long-handled sword, a pair of size, and then a straight-bladed sword that all my research says maybe it's a ninjato, but it's just a straight-edged sword. His pistol with the silencer accessory added on, and of course that is removable. A tactical knife. His iconic Uzi submachine gun. His sword, which I'm not sure if it has a proper name, but the character is often depicted with a sword like this. A backpack that is removable but ports into the back and has a spot to add or remove a sheath for his sword. So we get a ton of accessories to display this figure with, and we I haven't even talked about the weapon rack yet. So let's go ahead and get a better look first at the weapon rack. We'll get a little up close here with some of the weapons so we get some better idea of the detail, and then we're going to get a better look at Snake Eyes. Getting a little bit of a closer look here at that artwork. That is really neat. We get just uh, 
I don't know what those would be. Are they Japanese demons? I don't know much about Japanese art, but I think that is really cool looking. And then there's just a little bit more detail there on the wolf. Man, yeah, really cool. I like it. And then the racks are really nothing special, just pegged in there. And are those removable? I don't know if they're removable. I'm not going to try to remove it. And then we do have some Japanese lettering there on the side. But man, yeah, that is a very cool, well-done design. I like that a lot. And just to go through the weapons real quick so that we can see them, I'm just going to kind of fly through these. But starting first with the details there on the backpack, looks really good, decent enough paint. And then the sheath looks good as well, no complaints there. And of course, we do have that port that I mentioned that will port through the back there, through that uh bandolier as well i don't know is it called a bandolier when it has grenades on it but either way it'll port through both of those so very cool looking and i like the details there jumping next to his iconic sword very nice details you get a little serration there down at the end but otherwise the hilt and the blade look really cool i like that and these are all just solid pieces as well here is the nagamaki up close and we can see that also has some serration there on the lower bottom uh, part of the blade there but very cool looking for the nagamaki here is the hatchet or the throwing axe so good detail on those as well just uh again no paint so we get all black here is the comma up close and we do actually get some sculpted details there on the edge of the the pick there or the blade so that looks really cool his Uzi probably has some of the most detail on it. Very, very cool looking. I like that you can see essentially all the panel lines and such that you would see with that weapon. So the Uzi was actually very well done. I like that. Here is what I think I said. What was the, the Ninjato or broadsword? It's not really broadsword, but whatever. It's that straight edged or straight bladed sword. Very plain looking, but still looks very good. And then the Psy, which again, not a whole lot going on there. Very similar to what we've seen with really any other Psy. It's not a complicated design, so that looks good. The Spear, so that is one tip there. And then the other edge is actually going to look identical. So the Spear does have matching blades. And you do have some spots on the inside there so that when the figure is holding it, it's not completely loose. It does help him uh, grab a hold of that. And then the other two accessories that we did get with him. So he does have the alternate hand, which is either a karate chop hand or it does have, you can see these climbing claws on the inside of it. So that is going to be cool for the right hand. And then on the left hand, he does have this hand that is holding a shuriken or throwing star. I kind of wish we would have gotten just a pair of fisted hands because otherwise we just get these hands plus his gripping hands for all the various weapons. But, I mean, that's still not bad. But let's go ahead now and get a better look at the Snake Eyes figure. And I know what you're thinking. We are almost nine minutes into this review. Normally, I would be done by now, but we are just now getting into the actual figure itself. I know, it's been a bit of a long video, but it's a deluxe version. It came with a lot of weapons, and I really wanted to make sure that I showed off those weapons and gave you a good idea of what the figure looks like while holding them and how he can be posed. But now, finally getting up close to this figure, we can see... This was well worth the wait, in my opinion, to have Hasbro finally give us a 6-inch line of G.I. Joe. The head sculpt, there's not a whole lot to it, of course. We just have that visor and then just the rest of the face mask, which came out looking really good. The paint actually looks pretty sharp on here. There's a little bit of overpaint there. And otherwise, not too bad. A little bit of maybe underpaint there. Yeah, But I think that head sculpt looks really good and... Uh, I don't have any complaints on that. Looking at the upper torso there, we see we have that, uh, I called it a bandolier earlier, I still don't know what you call it, but it's got the grenades on it, we get some pouches and things like that, and then I have to double check, I don't remember the significance of the, uh, the dotted lines there for Snake Eyes, but it's appeared a couple of times here on a few different things, so I think it's even on his sword. Uh, but man, very cool looking design. Now, this of course is removable as far as that bandolier goes. And then this part here is also, it can looks like it'll come off if you wanted to take it off. But it also looks like the sculpt abruptly stops. So it doesn't appear that it's meant to be taken off. 
Uh, you can see some armor plating sculpted in. He's got the pouches there on the arms. And then we can see the forearm guard as well. And they added paint on all of those details there. So, you know, the straps actually have paint on it. I like that. And then underneath, just more armor plating belt. And then we see those dots again. But the belt came out painted really well. Well, almost really well. The buckle looks like it could have been painted a little bit better. But we get some sculpted detail on that. His pants even have the sculpted pockets, belt loops. Not a ton of paint around the belt loops, though. We can see, yeah, very plain looking. The uh, buckles here on the straps around his legs are painted. So we at least have that. And then when you look at the paint here on this part of what uh, would be the the pants or the it is the pants the part of the fabric there has a bit of a shine to it I think that looks really cool and it it helps it stand out it's a very similar color to the rest of the paint here in terms of like kind of a gray but it really helps it sort of pop and we can see a lot of texture detail there on the pants as well and then the boots you get a little bit of paint there at the top but yeah overall the figure really looks very good, very well done, and it's kind of a minimalist design, I'll say, but it still looks really good. And before I actually move on, one thing I did want to mention with the hands, be careful porting these in. They have these really long stems, so when you're putting it in, I mean, look at that. It goes halfway up the forearm. Just make sure you're going in perfectly straight. You don't want to go in at an angle and possibly snap those stems off, so just be careful with that. But all right, let's go ahead now and look at that articulation I was talking about. Now, for the articulation, I had said it's unlike anything we've seen before in the Marvel Legends line, and that still holds true. So we do have what we've seen before with a standard head uh, on the hinge there, so it can move forward, backwards, it can rotate around and all that good stuff, but the base of the neck also has some movement to it as well. So it's not a ton, but that little additional movement just gets him to look up that much further, look down that much further. So that is really cool that we actually have some range of movement there on that lower neck. That is really nice. The arms can come up actually quite a ways. That shoulder pad doesn't get in there too badly. Full rotation. And then he does have butterfly joints in there as well. They're not super deep, but they're there, so that is cool. He does have a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, which unfortunately don't go too far. The bicep kind of stops it. And then he does have uh, hinge and rotation on all the hands. And I will note, too, that on his weapon holding hands, you do get the dice throwing wrist peg on there. So that is very cool. Now, the other articulation that is great on this figure. So you have your standard ab crunch that can go down pretty far and can go back pretty far. But then he also has a ball joint right there at the waist. So, I mean, when he can go back, he can really go back and really go forward. I mean, well, hold on, his legs moved on that one. But he can go very far forward, and then he even gets a little bit of side-to-side -side there because of that waist action. So that is really very cool. So you also get the swivel with that waist, but having it on a ball joint instead of just a straight side-to-side, -side, I hope that is something that we see with some of the Marvel Legends. And then the next thing that is really cool as well is these are going to have a bit of a pop-down hinge on them, or it's not really a hinge, but just the legs can pop down so when you have him popped up he's gonna be let's get rid of the weapons real quick here so we can see there we go so you put the legs apart he can go f apart very far but as those come down i mean he can completely do the splits that's insane glenn webb would be impressed rest in peace buddy but man look at that that is insane how far they can go that is awesome. And then because of that, too, he can kick forward very far. Back still is a bit impeded just because of the design of there, of course. But that is very cool that they added that in there. He does have an upper thigh cut that is right there at the, uh, the straps, so that is nice. He does have double-jointed knees. He does have a boot cut. And then he has a hinge and ankle pivot. And that is going to do it for this review, everyone. So, overall, an amazing introduction into the Classified series for G.I. Joe. I mean, the articulation alone, like, I just wanted to see how far I could get him down 
And that is crazy. I mean, we don't have this kind of articulation yet with Marvel Legends. And I say yet because I'm hoping that they'll do some something with it. But very good introduction for sure. I'm very excited for this line. The details are well done. The paint is, I'm going to say it's on par with what we would expect with Marvel Legends. So it's not crazy. There's not a ton of paint. Of course, Snake Eyes is um, usually a pretty uh, minimalist character when it comes to that design. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited for this set and uh, can't wait for the rest of the figures to come out. But anyway, as I said, that is it for the review. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you like this review. Make sure to subscribe for more content just like this. And as always, thanks for stopping by and have a great day.